Hello everyone, welcome to, back to my channel. I am Krishna. I hope you guys are doing good and you guys are enjoying my video and learning from it. In today's video, I'll be talking about my Google of Summer of Code journey, how it changed the trajectory of my career and what all things you can do so that you can track it. I'll also be sharing some tips that I personally followed, uh, which you'll not find in any other sources to crack JSOC. So let's dive in. So in this section, uh, I'll tell you about my life, what was before JSOC and what was after JSOC. So before JSOC, I had not done any major internship. I was still struggling to get internship opportunities or, uh, you know, and my resume was not that great. Uh, after I cracked GSOC and completed it. And so the best thing that happened is that it added a very good project in my resume. I started getting interview opportunities. I got interview opportunity from Google, Amazon, Booking.com, Geo, and many more. So this is a direct impact of GSOC on your portfolio, on your uh, career. So in this section of the video, we'll talk about what Google Summer of Code is. It is an open source program sponsored by Google where you work on projects under the mentorship of some open source organizations, right? The projects that you build in GSOC are a really great addition to your portfolio to your uh, resume. So the first phase of applying to GSOC is selecting an organization. In this section, I'll be telling you exactly how I selected an organization and I'll walk you through step by step on how you can do it. So let's dive in. So basically what you need to do is you need to come to Google and search for Google Summer of Code or GSOC 2025 or whichever year you want to watch this video, right? Uh, the first page is generally top organizations, but what I would prefer is you can start with uh, page number two and then you look for the projects. For example, here you have Jenkins. It's a very famous open source organization and a lot of students contribute to it, right? Uh, there is CC Extractor and there are other projects. So you can start searching for organization that you like, uh, but start from page two or page three. That is where uh, the organization or which are less, less discovered and less contributions, you can find them, right? And the high scope that you'll be able to uh, clear under their mentorship, right? A uh, few things to notice and to make sure is that uh, you look for the projects that you are interested in. So check if they have been selected earlier or not, right? Uh, how many students are actively contributing to it? And do they have topics or projects that you are interested in? So, so I did the same thing and uh, the organization that I got selected or uh, initially I started contributing to was Chapel. It's a panel programming language for supercomputers. So you can always go and contribute there as well. Uh, the project that I contributed and I built was a unit testing framework for them. And it became one of my strongest projects till now uh, to showcase in my resume. So in this section of the video, we'll talk about the contribution. To start contributing, once you've selected the organization or two, three organization, start with the initial setup. So initial setup is very important before we're even going and looking for the issues to the setup. And one thing that I suggest is write a blog on how you did the setup and post it in either your personal blogging site or media. What it will help is start, this is the first contribution to that organization, right? The next thing you should be doing is uh, go look for the good first issues and uh, start solving them, right? Uh, always pick start with good first issue if it is this is the first time with that organization. Okay. Uh, one thing that I would want you guys not to do is uh, start opening PR with random changes that basically brings down your uh, credibility in front of mentors and in front of the organization, right? Uh, 
Also, try to pick up the bugs or issues which relate to the project that you want to contribute to. Um, apart from that, make sure that you are also taking part in discussions that are happening in issues Slack or, uh, you know, in their channel in uh, any uh, Slack channels or if they are using Discord or any other medium, make sure to participate in those discussions. Also, make sure you help uh, the other fellow developers or other fellow students or anyone else, irrespective of they are taking part in GSOC or not, right? Though this is one of the important qualities that any mentor or any organization, when they are looking for your uh, your proposal, they definitely look for your involvement with the community, right? One thing that I did when I was contributing and during my GSOC phase was that I tried to be on top of the leaderboard. What it helps is that uh, the mentors will know that you are contributing, that you are involved, and it gives a great add-on when they are looking at your proposal or when they are looking at, uh, when they are finally deciding. And uh, it, it, it has been a major factor uh, in many of the proposals that I have personally reviewed when I was a mentor. So in this section of the video, I'll be talking about the proposals, right? So your proposal should be clear, detailing exact things about the project that you want to build with the detailed timeline, right? It should contain the tech uh, code snippets wherever applicable. So let's dive into my proposal on how, what I did, what I wrote little bit and uh, how detailed it was. So yeah, let's go ahead. So this is my proposal. Uh, initially, uh, if you go down, I started with the name of the organization, project title, Google Summer of Code 2019, indexes. So basic details. This was one of the templates that I followed and I can, I'll be sharing the proposal itself in the description box, right? Um, it was then about me, YGSOC, and little bit questions that are asked by the organization, my experiences, right? Uh, then few of my open source code, uh, my contribution to Chapel, and what different things I built, few of the survey questions, right? Uh, talking about the task that, okay, what I'm going to build, basically about unit testing, why it is important, what are the different benefits, right? Uh, how it helps in debugging process and everything. And then I talk a little bit about unit test framework, what I'll be building, book, uh, a test case, test suit, test runner, and other details, right? A uh, few of the code snippets, and then a detailed timeline, actually. Okay. Uh, one more thing that is very important to share with the mentors, and maybe you can add it in your uh, proposal itself is the research that you have done. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, where I have put my research and I directly ping my, the mentors of the project uh, about my research, what I have done and then ask for their inputs. It's also a great way to let them know that you are interested in, the, uh, in this project and gets a little heads up uh, from them on what is what you are doing is right, is your approach right or wrong? So let's dive in. So uh, this was one of the research I did for unit test framework. So I went ahead and did research on few of the languages, unit testing frameworks, for example, Julia, how exactly they work. I went ahead and read their code base of the framework itself. Uh, I also did research on Go unit testing, Go's unit testing framework, and uh, more importantly, I also did a research on Python. My project was heavily inspired by Python, and I kept on referencing Python frameworks, uh, unit uh, code bases to complete the project. So yeah, that that was about that was about the proposal. Uh, one more thing uh, is that make sure you select max to max one or two organization that will keep you in focus. I 
uh, selected only one organization that is Chapel, and I put proposal for only one project, which is unit testing framework. But you don't need to do that. Uh, you can definitely put proposal uh, in one or two organization. I would highly recommend to select one organization where you are more confident in, and then put proposal for one or two at max proposals. Uh, it's a personal choice. Uh, and it's up to you how you want to do that, right? And uh, yeah, make sure once you are done with your proposal and you have submitted your proposal, you still continue contributing. You should not leave it because mentors do look at uh, if you are contributing, how is your contribution after the proposal phase. And also make sure to be humble and helpful to other participants and other community uh, folks, right? Keep helping them. So yeah, uh, this is the video about Google Summer of Code, how I did it and how you can do it. So if you like the video, do give us a, th do give us a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel and do add your comments about what other videos you want me to make. Thank you.